Just a question, uh, Mary. Is this something we need to act on tonight? I, I talked with uh, Mr. Slavin also, and he, he, he has some some other ideas I think that maybe would be worth us tossing around before we make a selection. <coughs> if it's not, I don't think it's eminent that we make that selection tonight. So I was wondering if we could, uh, if that's something we couldn't discuss, maybe come up with a, uh, uh, a couple of alternatives for that. Um, I know Mr. Slavin has given me another name to consider. Um, I wasn't comfortable with that name. It was a name we had already considered in the past. Um, I don't know if there's any other ideas. We sent out the resume of Mr. Beckett a while ago, and this is the first I've heard of this from council. Uh, I think, me personally, I think there needs to be a period with an interim in place while Mr. Treadway is still here so that we don't just have someone coming in when Mr. Treadway is, is already left at Tennessee. Um, so it's on the agenda, I'm kind of going forward with it. If you want to propose an alternative tonight, I'm happy to listen to it. I got a problem. I need to do, I tried to get some more research done on it. There's, there's just a lot of stuff on his resume that doesn't fill me with confidence. So I don't know, I don't know if there's extenuating circumstances or whatever. I'd just like a little bit more time to look into it. We don't have a whole lot of time left. I know. <laughs> Has anyone else sent you anything? Anybody else? Just this one person? And one person from Slate. No, well, then we have the same names we discussed during our exact session last time. Okay. Do you remember that? Well, I, and I do have some some additional concerns about and going back to his days in Riverdale. And I mean, there's there's a few things that that I would 
feel more comfortable with talking to him in person before making that decision. Again, this is the first council has made me aware of it. It's on the agenda tonight, and so I'm going for the nomination. The council wants to make a motion to postpone our table, but this is our last regular scheduled council meeting before Mr. Treadway leaves. Um, nomination and council's confirmation of Dexter Harrison to the Board of Appeals. I believe there were some issues. Uh, it was communicated that there were some issues prior. Mr. Harrison's uh, nomination that his application had checked that there was a conflict and I believe he had inadvertently checked yes when he should have checked no. Uh, it was just a misreading of a question so he has resubmitted that application and council has had it since the last council meeting for review. Um, Mr. Harrison is here tonight if anyone would like to ask him any questions. Uh, consideration action of award for bid for TW Briscoe Park Pool Services, Mr. Treadway. Please. Uh, we went through the bid process and Atlanta Club Pools was low bid. Um, checked references, everything was fine. Um, talked to uh, the contact and uh, they feel like they can do what was in the bid package for that price. So to stay with a low bid, that's, that's what's on the agenda. Anyone have any questions for Lisa? How close were they to the next highest one? Um, 2,000. We know the people? We know, we know um, people. We've never used them before, no. They're out of Marietta. Is this, do we have, if they don't perform the services that we contract them, then we have a way to? Correct. To remove Correct. It? Usually, we would keep them for the year because it's hard, especially with pool, to switch out. But the way it reads is that after a year, we're okay, they're okay, we continue on for three years. And each year, we can evaluate. So after this year, with them being new, if, if there were issues or problems, then we can. Well, we'll know pretty quick if there's yeah, an issue. Yeah. That wouldn't preclude us from acting if we needed to, if they weren't doing sufficient job. Correct. Right? Correct. Any other questions for Ms. Platt? Um, consideration action on city support of grant application for Master Gardener, Amperton Woods. Yeah, this, again, this is um, this is brought before council at the last first session. Basically, we're just uh, signing up that we do not have a problem with Ms. Whitman uh, applying for a grant to uh, perform educational classes at the uh, at the uh, community garden once that community garden is up and. and uh, Check with the state attorney about whether there would be any conflict there, and um, I was told by the attorney there's no conflict. So, does the city have any liability issues for allowing those people on? I, I don't see any additional liability issues beyond what we would have any time we allow someone um, to come into the park, and we I think we would probably also fall under the Recreational Property Act, which would give us um, some sort of allow them to use it free of charge. I, would, I didn't look at that particular angle of it, but um, I believe we follow the Recreational Property Act, which would give us actual immunity from liability um, for allowing them to use the uh, property free of charge. What about, it's my understanding the park property was purchased with federal funds? I don't know if that's correct. Do you know the background on that? Um, was all the park purchased with federal funds? I don't know if all of it was, because it was it was piecemealed out. Are there any restrictions on the use of the park because of the funding? I'll defer to it. There was, uh, we had an issue back when we did the recycling center. There were some funds that had been used, and I think it was all taken care of, and that any kind of money that we got from federal that had restrictions on it was moved over to Baker's Rock. So as I understand from my experience, it was free and clear. Uh, any other questions on the grant application? Okay. Moving on, purchase of the fence around the upper community garden, Mayor Horton Woods. Um, I'd like to uh, perhaps take this off of the action agenda. And um, what what I heard the other night when we had our meeting with Parks and Rec is that Parks and Rec has some fencing issues also. So what, what I think we would be better off doing is if we um, going forward, knowing that if, if council, if council's in agreement to, to go
go ahead with the park or with, with the fencing for uh, the community garden is to also roll into that the repairs that you are you feel necessary for the security of the park and roll all those numbers together into one number and then just get it uh, approved by council and proceed with that. Did you have an opinion as far as the purchase of the fence? The um, <clears throat> the SPLOS resolution um, mayor referred simply to, I believe it was, was it recreational um, activity. We, we believe the SPLOS resolution was written sufficiently broad where an improvement to the park in the form of the fence could be um, could be done with SPLOS funds. Now, the one thing we, we don't know is whether or not there were any specific advertisements that were issued saying we're going to spend park money or SPLOS money on this, or we're going to spend SPLOS money on this, but based upon the resolution uh, that was used for the SPLOS, we believe that we're fine to use uh, the money for those purposes. What about the private group aspect? In terms of the gratuities clause, mm -hmm. because we're not abandoning the property to the, um, to the community garden association, the city would be allowing them to use the park property. Um, I don't see a gratuities clause issue there. Not with the property, with the fence. And with the fence as well, um, under the under the auspices of we're we're creating a fence that is. It would have a benefit, perhaps even more of a benefit, to the people who are using the community garden. But everyone as a whole in the city could be seeing the benefit from it, um, because we're, we're we're protecting the garden, we're keeping the animals out, we're doing all those sorts of things, and the ultimate. Uh, use of this of uh, the city garden itself is providing a public benefit, uh, and therefore I did not see that we have an ultimate gratuities clause issue. Uh, so now, did you review uh, Green School District versus Green County in your in your research for this loss? I do not recall reviewing Green School District versus Green County, no ma'am. Um, about loss money being used to benefit a private organization. Well, I, I would agree. If if we are using the money to benefit a private organization. Then, then, I, then I do think we would have an issue with it. The, the way that I see my analysis of the fence would be that we are putting a fence inside the city park um, and it's a betterment of the park itself. And so I don't see that issue in this case. Now, I did not review green. I would need to go back and actually review green to see if it was gonna be a, a problem, which I can so do. How is it not? How, uh, and I'm just trying to clarify the sure. train thought. How is it not an issue? Uh, it's a private organization. It's not a city group. It's not a city garden. It's a group of volunteers. So how do you how do you distinguish that from a group of masons or an art council or any other private organization? No, uh, I'm asking. I'm asking the city attorney for an opinion. Um, I see it the community garden as as being something that. Um, let me put it to you this way. The ultimate policy on, on, on whether or not the council sees it as a public benefit, I believe, is a decision for the mayor and council to make. Um, if the mayor and council decides that this is a public benefit going forward, I think that would be reviewed on an abuse of discretion standard. In terms of whether or not I think you can make that determination and it not be a, an abuse of discretion, I do believe that you could have a community garden that would be viewed as a public benefit to the city of Snellville. Right. I understand large. that, for instance, Swanee has a city of Swanee garden that they're doing, but this is not a city of Snellville garden. This is a group of private right. volunteers. <clears throat> so I, I don't understand how you're getting to that distinction between a group of volunteers using that or a group coming in, a private group coming in and using city hall for free, a private group, how do we charge them rental then for city hall? Well, and, and I think it's a decision that the mayor and council can make based upon the, the facility and the question that then comes down to, are we violating the protection? I mean, one of the things that uh, that we consider was, um, <coughs> you know, I, I, I haven't been to this park, but I'd be willing to bet that there are a lot of people who um, who, who can go out there and who, who, do we have any kind of barbecue grills or something like that at these places, the kind that you sometimes see in places that are um, the, the ones that are permanently installed and we could have private groups who go up and who use that um, and we're not going to charge them for it um, in, in those situations. And I, I mean, is a, is a private group going to benefit from this? I think the answer to that is yes, but the question comes back to what is the purpose behind the, the, the fund um, and funding of the fence, and I do believe that if the city decides to go forward and fund the fence, that it will be on, I think it will be on solid legal ground to do it. Can I, uh, 
first of all, you know, I, I don't know whether it's really a private group. The difference between the, um, the community garden at Snellville and Swanee Garden, the difference is about $150,000 in city expense. Um, the volunteers are they're not taking this on as a private endeavor. They're taking it on as realizing the city doesn't have the funds to go forward and spend $200,000 in developing this park, this garden. So what they're doing is we have volunteers who are willing to step up, go out, gather money to make permanent improvements to the park in the form of a pavilion, a greenhouse, uh, raised beds, benches, uh, a uh, amphitheater. They're willing to go out and get private funds in order to do this to improve the city property. And all we're asking is that we have a fence around to protect it. That's all we're asking for. So I, I don't see where this is a private group doing this. It's just a group of individuals who are trying to save the city money. Uh, you're going to make a motion to postpone item E? I'm going to make a motion that we uh, mm -hmm. that we postpone, but uh, only until the next meeting. And I would very much like Lisa, if, would that be enough time for you, Lisa, or do you need longer than that? I mean, we have time if you need a month. We can wait for the second meeting. Let's wait to the second, and I want okay. to clarify that you're talking about the perimeter fencing. I'm talking about any fencing in the park, within the park that needs repair. Okay. So, so well, uh, <clears throat> Mayor Cortem, you, what, you, what you're asking, um, I assume, is that, that Lisa makes an inventory of the fence, and once these areas are ID'd, then we can <coughs> put forth more or less of a, a um, request for proposal. Mm -hmm. Based on based on everything that's needed in the park, Correct. including the the fence for the um, for the community garden for the protection of the investment by our volunteers in the community garden. All right. So essentially, what we're going to be looking at is an RFP that's going to go out and say, well, this is what we need fixed, and this is how much it's going to cost. We didn't have the funding for that set aside. Where are you suggesting that funding for the? I'm Just suggesting that well, I'm, I'm suggesting that we use the SPOS funds, which, which we have been spoken we have spoken about. I think we need to get a dollar figure and see what we're looking at before we make any final decisions, but I think there's something worth, unless anyone in the council objects to it, and the majority objects, then we won't do it. But if, if unless we have the majority objects, then I'd, I'd like to proceed with um, Lisa getting us a, an inventory of, of what other fencing we would need to repair, roll it all into one RFP and get it out as soon as possible and get an answer on it as soon as possible. Uh, consideration and action on engineering for Oak Road Passive Park. I know I asked this to be on, but I, it was on before. Can it just back on that? Uh, Lisa, Lisa, the Oak Road Passive Park. We, <coughs> I'm going off the top of my head, Billy, and kick, kick, kick me when I'm on. Uh, we did have engineering proposals to continue on with the uh, planning for. Uh, the Oak Road Passive Park. Uh, there have been some level of engineering, preliminary engineering and design work done. Uh, we were asking for additional work to take us to the bid phase. I don't remember, do you remember the cost of that building? No, uh, I did not get uh, cost. They gave us an hourly breakdown. Uh, I think Lisa may have gotten cost, but that was never passed on to me. I don't want to just shout out a number. I do have it, but I would have to get back to it because I don't have that with me. <laughs> oh, Josh, I'll be in more, more prepared with one where... Did we ever hear back from the county? Uh, on the side? Not anything formally. We do have that included. There's, there's, that, there's, that project is in the TIA discussion. We're going to have a little bit later. I think we need to find that out for you. No sense putting tires on the car with no engine. Well, the ju ju jumping ahead, the county does not... The, the, Improvement to Oak Road Park is on the list of uh, potential projects that the county is looking at funding with their additional Transportation Investment Act money. They've set aside some money to go into, uh, to, to jointly fund projects with some cities with. If this is a project we wanted to pursue, I think that's a project we could, we could apply to for the county for a joint funding under the TIA money. Uh, John can probably <coughs> Cover, cover that in his report later on. Uh, he is on the committee that's putting together the um, parameters, I guess you call it, for evaluating those projects. So we should have some input. Would it be best for us to postpone this agenda item until we have those engineering figures? Sure. I mean, I mean uh, yeah. I mean, we just, we're not, 
we don't have, I think, the information you probably need to make a decision. Uh, consideration on, on surplus vehicles, Mr. Kelly? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Kelly, you mentioned you have your package, the bids uh, uh, that, we, that we have on our surplus vehicles. Um, The list, yeah, the list of the vehicles that um, uh, we want you to declare surplus. Uh, so we need a motion and, a, and a, an approval of that list for those vehicles to be surplus so we can proceed with bidding them out and disposing of them. I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Who ultimately is responsible for making that whole process work? Front to, front to back. Ultimately responsible? City manager. Okay next in line to get it happen. In other words, I guess I want to find out who is going to be responsible for making sure it happens, other than you. Basically, Melissa handles all that as far as she, she handles, all, she handles all of our procurement and uh, selling the surplus property, okay. those kinds of things. She we will work with people in individual departments that are, that okay. are exposed okay. to those vehicles. Do you report that something's been sold? I mean, is there a follow-up to a list of 12 cars and then a month from now, we have two cars left to be sold. I guess I just want to have something to measure success with. Yeah, nobody's ever asked for a report. Okay. Well, I just don't want 12 cars to be sitting out there for six months. To, I want some mechanism to know that we're getting some of the stuff done. That's all. So if you can just let me know. I, not a big request. Just, just, just to follow up. Just let us know. And, you know, you've created 12 sales of cars. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to how many are you going to buy? I'm not buying any. I'm not buying any, anything else that takes gasoline. <laughs> any other questions about the surplus vehicles? Yeah, okay. Moving on uh, to the performance audit, we all received uh, the three proposals. Um, I think they were all over the place. Uh, I was most comfortable with one group. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts. I was uncomfortable with $140,000. Yeah. Um, in reading the proposals, I think the Carl Vincent Institute, in my mind, was the closest to what I was thinking of, both as far as scope and, um, and price. I don't know if the council wants to move forward with that now. I tend to agree. Um, yeah. based, on, based on what was given to us, I mean, right. and based on the performance of, you know, of the division of the institute this weekend, and the fact we've used them in the past, um, I'd be supported and moving forward. Yeah, make her ask it because it's a UGA deal. Yeah, well. All right, so if I can then, at the appropriate time, have a motion to approve a contract with the Carl Vincent Institute. 27.5. 27.5. While we're on that subject, could we, maybe this is the time. I was just going to say that um, uh, Saturday there was uh, some talk about another, another um, retreat where we would head towards polls and things like that. I, I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to make sure that that's something that's not dropped. It's pursued. Before before we left Saturday, I asked Murray to give me look at his calendar and give me some dates when he'd be available to do those. So he's he's already supposed to be getting those back to me. So. Okay. Right. Uh, consideration action on the red system, Councilman Krause. I would like to postpone any voting this evening. And just, um, I talked to the chief, and he was willing to do a presentation to council and people present this evening. Then maybe we could postpone that vote to the second council meeting in April. That would give me time to get it out to the public. I don't feel it's fair to vote on this tonight without at least explaining it to them, as I've done the other systems. And so tonight they'll get an explanation uh, from the chief, and then I can get my feedback from the public. And then we'll go forward maybe at the end of April, that second council meeting, and put that to a vote. Have um, you looked into, sorry, go ahead. That's, I'm good. Have you looked into uh, GWMA and presenting it to the city managers to see if we could get a discount rate? I have not. I need more time with this. So I would maybe see when that next meeting is before you pick up postponement. Okay. Day. Do you do we need a date to postpone it to, or can we just? No, we'll be doing that right now. Okay. Moving on then to the work session agenda. Do we have any correspondence to review? 
Uh, just have one uh, item of correspondence. We did receive notification from the county tax commissioner's office uh, about property taxes for this year. Um, they indicate that they will get the digest information to us on June the 18th. Uh, that's after our, that's, that's the third Monday of the month, so that's after uh, the first uh, meeting of uh, uh, city council for that month. Uh, and recall in June, typically uh, the second meeting is, is canceled because of GMA, so you may need to look at rescheduling uh, there. Uh, while, while, while we'll get it on June the 18th, we need to have the millage rate resolution uh, back to them by July the 10th. That's the day after the second Monday in July. So right now there's one scheduled meeting between when you'll receive the tax digest and when you'll need to, to adopt the millage rate. So we probably <coughs> need some meeting times in between that. Uh, and they're also looking at uh, uh, billing for taxes going out on August the 15th and with a single uh, installment this year, which will be due on all, October the 15th. So we'll actually be getting revenues in a little bit earlier this year than we have, we have in the past. So. I suggest that we perhaps we have, uh, we since it's coming on Monday the 18th and, and uh, Monday the 25th would be our second meeting. And we're not going to, um, we're still going to be in Savannah for that. I suggest that we either schedule our second meeting for uh, Wednesday, June 20th, or for Wednesday, June 27th, so we can all make sure we have it in our calendars, and that way we should have that figure and we'll be able to work with the digest of the chemical military. Yeah, I'll just remember that. When the appropriate time comes, it will call a special call meeting and send that out to all of council. Can we not set it aside? Is there a reason we can't do it We need to look at, we've got some notification requirements on, on as far as the uh, uh, five-year tax history and some other things. Let us kind of make sure, we'll, we'll, we'll shoot for those days. We'll need to look at, at backing up to when we have to have the notices out, so we just need to make sure we can meet all those deadlines. Okay. Any other correspondence? No. no. Uh, any to the attorney for the No, ma'am. Uh, transportation.